with hyperlipidemia, we're going to go into further detail because it's important for you to understand the biochemistry of, well, maybe, just maybe, it might be part of what's known as your hyperlipidemia with acquired, meaning to say that you're trying to lose weight and you're eating too much, or the fact that you might have genetic issues in which you have no control, but you have to be careful. And so these are things that you need to make sure that you explain to your patient so that they know as to how to deal with their particular issue. So to begin at the top, and here, I want you to understand as to what's going on in the schematic so that you can clearly see as to what is the normal pathophys and biochemistry of the lipid that we're going to consume from our mouth, and it's making a way all the way over to the liver, okay? So here... Let's say that you just had a fatty meal. You just had a bratwurst. You just had a burger from McDonald's. So that means it's a fatty meal. <laughs> I don't mean to stereotype, but there you have it. So now you just ate a fatty meal. For effective digestion, as far as your licensing boards are concerned, what do you want to know? Sure, you have a little bit of lipase in your mouth. I'm not arguing that. But in terms of effective digestion of your muscle, or oh, excuse me, <laughs> why would you want to eat your muscle? Fat. Well, it wouldn't be in the mouth. So the effective digestion, maybe perhaps in the stomach, well, once again, it's going to assist with fat digestion there as well. You have acids, might then break apart your meats and such if you're consuming it. But in terms of effective digestion of your lipid, it begins in the duodenum. Is that clear? Really? Mm -hmm. Remember, if I ask you this question, which is this patient has uh, right upper quadrant pain postprandial. Every time this patient has a meal, there's going to be right upper quadrant pain. What is happening with this patient? What is the name of the hormone and the name of the cell that's responsible for causing this pain after eating a fatty meal? It's the fact that you're working upon your eye cell. And the eye cell is going to release what, please? Your CCK. Could that be a question? Sure it can. It can be from physio. It can be from path. But what does that mean to you? What's causing this right upper quadrant pain after eating a fatty meal. It's the fact that the eye cell, releasing cholecystokinin, works on the gallbladder, which is uh, the pathology. It might be cholecystitis, isn't it? And that gallbladder contains what? It contains bile. Why do you require that bile? Ah, now we get into the effective, effective, effective lipid digestion. So we have this bile, which is then being housed in your gallbladder, which makes its way to the second part of the duodenum. Are you there? Are you with me? Good. And do you see this enterocyte? And so therefore, that bile coming into the second part of the duodenum is going to surround the triglycerides. And when you surround your triglyceride with bile, what's this called? You call this a micelle? They call this a calomicron? What do you call this? You call this a micelle, don't you? So myocell has been formed with emulsification process. What is it going to do? It, it does exactly that. It emulsifies the triglycerides because the triglyceride cannot get... You see those finger-like projections? Those finger-like projections are the brush border of your duodenum, shall we say. So you see where it says free fatty acids and glycerol. That would be the lumen of the duodenum. Are you with me? And this has now become emulsified with the help of bile. Then you're going to create this free fatty acids, FFA, which is then going to make its way through the brush border into the enterocyte. Stop there for a second. So earlier with that question that I was trying to pose to you in terms of, well, what was it that caused the pain postprandial? Well, it was the fact that cholecystitis was then aggravated by the hormone which is being released by the lipid which was making its way down into duodenum. Clear. What was the cell that released the CCK? It's called an eye cell, isn't it? Good. So now, the bile is emulsified. Let's get back to normal here and continue through the biochemical process. So we're now inside my enterocyte and we're going to now recreate that triglyceride. We're going to reesterify, is what it's called. When you reesterify, think of this as being those of you that like X Men. Why not? And there's Nightcrawler. What does he do? He disintegrates, he goes through the wall, and then he reappears. <laughs> That's what this is doing. The triglyceride went through the wall. It first became free fatty acid, a mono type of glycerol, and then it reformed into triglyceride. <laughs> Here I am. What are you going to do with me? You're going to form a colomicron, a nascent. What's nascent mean? Baby. Think neonatal, neonate. It's nascent colomicron. What kind of apolipoprotein do you require? You must memorize apple B48. It's imperative that you know that. 
So the APOB48 has now formed a collimicron. What does the collimicron have in it? It has what? It has triglycerides. Good. What are we trying to get to? What's our objective for this entire illustration? It's the fact that you have lipid that you're consuming from your mouth making its way to the liver. Is that clear? So now you have a collimicron. What's the number one method? What's the preferred method of transport of your lipid? It is through your lymphatics. You see lymphatics. So there it is. And if you're a dork like I am, then you'll notice that after you eat, and if you were to do less ultrasound, you can actually see these, after a, a, a lipid-rich meal, a river of collimicrons running through your lymphatics. Absolutely magnificent. So now you find these lymphatics that it's going to make its way eventually where? Enter thoracic duct, empty into right atrium. Are you there? Good. And from the right atrium, what are you going to enter? You're going to, of course, enter your blood vessels. This is important, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Because inside that blood vessel, there are a couple of things that I wish to bring to your attention. So here, you'll notice that HDL. What's HDL mean to you? It's called, quote, unquote, good cholesterol, isn't it? So that good cholesterol is then going to donate its C2 and E to the nascent collimicron. What's nascent mean? Neonatal, baby. Think of it that way. It's naive. It is now, you have been knighted. What does that mean? HDL comes over to Kalamicron and says, Son, you have now been knighted. I am now imparting onto you C2 and B40, excuse me, C2 and E. And now you have a mature Kalamicron. Still filled with what, please? Triglycerides. Where are you? In your, in your blood vessel. You're literally in your circulation. So now that we have a mature Kalamicron, what is its ob objective? To make its way to the, to the liver. Let's continue. All right, now, there's number two. Number two says CPL. That means capillary lipoprotein lipase. CPL is capillary lipoprotein lipase. Eventually, what are we going to do here? We're going to put in, we're going to plug in this pathologies. But if you don't understand the normal first, it makes it quite impossible for you to understand what's going on with the pathology and you're just memorizing and that's not going to really, it, it won't be in your best interest. So the capillary lipoprotein lipase, you pay attention to lipase, is then going to take the triglyceride from your collimicron and extract it. Is that clear? And that triglyceride, then what's known as your fat muscle. But now what do you have? You have an empty collimicron. You see that collimicron number three? It's empty. It has empty nest syndrome. Oh, my baby has left me. What do you mean? The triglyceride has been removed by whom? Caprolipoprotein lipase. This is the second lipase, actually, from biochemistry that comes into play. Second what was the first one in biochemistry way back where it says free fatty acids that was the lumen of the duodenum you had your first lipase you did yes you did in biochemistry you referred to or you learned about pancreatic lipase keep that separate from what we're looking at here in pathology which is capillary lipoprotein lipase cpl is that clear make sure that you understand this well repeat me if you need to so that you're clear about which lipase deals with what there is a third lipase that you learned about in biochemistry. That third lipase only comes into play after the fat has been stored. And so that is referred to what's known as hormone-sensitive lipase, and that's something that you and I will be looking at in endocrinology. Let's continue. So now that we have an empty collimicron, what do you need so that you can be taken up by the liver? It's called an E receptor. You take a look at that three. So number three is dealing with what's known as the E receptor. Now, let's take number one, let's take number two, let's take number three. And now that you've understand the flow of this illustration, you can see how clearly you can understand what's going on with your patient and the presentation. The first one, number one is A beta lipoproteinemia, in which you literally are not able to form a purple column micron because apolipoprotein B or apo B48 is not present. Pathology number one. Pathology number two, it's the fact that you need to have C2. Where does C2 come from? I know that we're speaking a different language, but you and I, you and I, right now, we're seeing eye to eye, aren't we? We have to. And we have to speak the same language, and that's where I'm trying to get you right now. So you need C2. Pay attention. That C2 is there to stimulate your CPL. What's CPL stand for? Capillary, not pancreatic, and it's definitely not hormone sensitive. Is that clear? It's a capillary lipoprotein lipase. Yeah, that C2 exists to stimulate that CPL. What if you're deficient of C2? Huh, your lipoprotein lipase isn't working. 
If that isn't working, oh my goodness, what are you accumulating in your patient? Tons of calomicron. What does calomicron mean to you in terms of presentation of your patient? Is it triglycerides or cholesterol? Good. Triglycerides. So your patient is going to have triglyceride levels out the wazoo. In other words, it'll be ridiculously elevated. Even 150 is high. 300 is really high. Thousands. This is what I'm talking about with triglyceride. Not a good thing. Is that clear? That's pathology number two. Pathology number three. I would like for you to take that capital E, the E receptor, and you see the horizontal lines. How many horizontal lines do you see with that capital E? One, two, three. Good. So there are three lines. So therefore, type three. We'll talk about this coming up in a table, not to worry. All I'm doing here is introducing concepts here and plugging in relevant pathologies. So type three, what's known as hyperlipoproteinemia, is actually missing your E receptor. So guess what? You cannot properly take up your calomicron remnant into your liver. It's called remnant removal disease, but another name that you want to know for this is called familial dysbeta lipoproteinemia. Here we go. Pathology one, two, and three. Spend a little bit of time here. Everything that you need to know about these pathologies begins with understanding the biochem, the phys, and then eventually the disease processes. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.